What's up guys, my name is Brandon and now that iOS 14.4 beta 1 and iOS 14.3 have been out for a while, I wanted to give you guys an update on how the software has been running. So I've been using iOS 14.4 beta 1 on my main daily device, the iPhone 12 Pro here, ever since it was released two weeks ago. And I've also been using iOS 14.3 on my 2020 iPad Pro my iPhone 12, and also my iPhone 10R ever since it was released about three weeks ago. So like I mentioned, we're gonna be discussing how these versions have been running so far over the past few weeks in terms of the performance, the battery life, the connectivity, the bugs, and more. So we're also gonna be discussing when we can expect to see the next beta of 14.4, Maybe if we're gonna see a 14.3.1 and more. So let's first talk about iOS 14.4 beta one. So you can see that that's one of the new features that just randomly popped up even though I'm not close to my HomePod. So there you go, right away you can see a bug in iOS 14.4. But anyways, I've been using this ever since it was released to the public and also to developers as a beta on my iPhone 12 Pro here. This is my device I use every single day. And I talked about in my one week later follow-up how it's not been the best in terms of performance. I've had some stutter issues and things like that. And actually this software has gotten a little bit worse since last week. And it is a first beta, so I'm not gonna be criticizing it too much. I'm not gonna be saying it's annoying or anything like that. That's what betas are for. Betas are supposed to have bugs, and that's why we report them so that it gets better with time. So once again, if you guys are not reporting your bugs in the feedback application, you definitely should be. Now, before we get into more about the performance and the bugs and things like that, I did want to mention a new feature that's just now starting to roll out for certain applications, and that is the new privacy feature that we saw introduced at WWDC with iOS 14. When it was first announced, we saw that Apple is going to be you know, pretty much limiting cross-site tracking. And this is kind of a big deal right now with Facebook you know, getting upset at Apple over you know giving users the option to prevent cross-site tracking because that's how facebook ads are so effective is because they track you around the internet of course and you know find out what ads to serve you so basically now with ios 14 and this is not just new for ios 14.4 or 14.3 this has been there ever since ios 14.0 but it's just now starting to become more popular with developers and different applications but you can see this is the pop-up here so this is for the mba application in this example so it says allow mba to track your activity across other companies apps and websites and then it says your data will be used to provide you a better and personalized ad experience and then you get the option to either ask app not to track or allow the app to track you on other apps and websites so the fact that apple is even offering this you know as an option is crazy because this is good for privacy this is good i think a lot of people are going to opt to not have the application track you around. But you know this is obviously a big deal for Facebook. That's why they're fighting this and really upset about it because this will have a big impact, a negative impact on Facebook ads in terms of you know how they collect the information to serve ads on their site. So that's pretty interesting. And like I said, that is now starting to roll out to more applications. That is not specific to 14.4 or 14.3. That is a server-side update. And of course, developers will have to enable that with their applications. I also wanted to mention that we're starting to see even more animated cover arts. So I showed you guys the animated cover arts with different playlists like Apple Music playlists, but now I'm starting to notice it with a lot of actual albums from artists. So not just playlists. You can see this one's really cool there from Lil Uzi Vert. We also have a good one for folklore. So if we go to folklore right here, you can see the animated cover art like the birds flying across right there. So really cool. Of course, you do get this on Spotify, but we never had this on Apple Music until now. And I've noticed it with quite a few different album covers, which is really cool because it's not just playlists. And we're starting to see more and more as time goes on. And I think the artists will start to implement this a lot more moving forward as well. So it just makes the whole you know experience inside music just that much better. Now moving on to some more technical details about iOS 14.4 beta one. So in my follow-up video and even in my first what's new video, I told you guys that there is actually some stutter throughout the OS on 14.4 beta one, especially when going into the app switcher or pulling down on the control center. Some users are even reporting that when they switch pages, like when they go from page to page, there's some slight stutter there as well. Now, thankfully the stutter has not gotten worse. It's kind of just remained the same for me but there are some other factors that have made iOS 14.4 beta one just really feel like a beta one, like a first beta 
And the first one actually has to do with Bluetooth. So it's been a while since I've had any issues with Bluetooth, but over the past you know three or four days, I've actually had some pretty annoying issues with Bluetooth, mainly with my Tesla. So I have a Tesla Model 3, and I've had Bluetooth issues in the car. So sometimes my phone just simply will not even connect to my Tesla. And I didn't update the Tesla or anything like that. It only happened on 14.4. When I brought in another phone on 14.3, everything worked fine. So it's an issue with 14.4 beta one for whatever reason. It fixed after I rebooted, but then it just comes back. So I'll randomly just have to reboot my device when that happens. It's really annoying. Also, I have issues with applications running properly in the background. So sometimes, once again, with the Tesla, my Tesla key, so I use the app as the key for my car, sometimes it just simply won't be detected in time. Like it just won't happen immediately. There's like a slight delay. I'm not sure if that's, you know, just because the background app refresh isn't working properly on 14.4 beta one or what, but I've noticed that it does not pick up that key immediately every time I come up to the car. And then also some apps just simply don't refresh in the background, like my ESPN fantasy app would just simply not refresh in the background, even though I have background app refresh on. It also happened with Twitter. So there's definitely some issues going on on the back end when it comes to refreshing apps in the background, just kind of keeping applications running properly in the background as well. Now, I've also had quite a few issues with Apple Music and the HomePod, specifically the HomePod Mini. So I would control the music from my HomePod Mini with the actual music application. So like in here, when I went to the Q section right here, when I would tap on like shuffle or repeat or whatever right there, specifically when it was connected to the HomePod Mini, when it was playing out of the HomePod Mini, I would press on one of these buttons and it just simply would not press. So I would press like shuffle right there and it wouldn't highlight, it wouldn't actually show me it's working until I went out of this, until I minimized it, and then I brought this back up again and then tapped on it and then I would see that it was selected. So just quite a few bugs with that and I'm sure it's likely due to the new interface when you hand off to the HomePod Mini, that is very buggy. The whole platter that it brings up is very buggy. So that's kind of expected, but I've just had some really annoying issues with Apple Music and the HomePod Mini. But thankfully I've not had any more issues with Apple Music itself. So I don't have any issues with it pausing randomly or anything like that, like I mentioned previously. Now, speaking of music, I still get the wrong color AirPods Max glyph when I connect my AirPods Max. So when I start playing them, you know, the glyph comes down to show me that they're connected to my device and it will show a silver pair, even though I have the space gray pair of AirPods Max. So that's still a bug here in 14.4 beta one. It's the same on 14.3. So I'm not sure how such a simple thing has not been fixed yet. So those are really the only updates I have since last week's follow-up video. So this is my second follow-up video on 14.4. If you guys missed that, I will link that up in the cards and down in the description below. But aside from that, you know, I have some things that I hope we see in beta two, or at least in the final build of 14.4. And the first one is going to be dual SIM 5G. So this is something we expected by 2021, like in late 2020 is what Apple said, but of course we never got that. So I hope we see that in beta two, or again, at the very least in the final build. Now, I also hope that we get next gen controller support. So like the PS5 and Xbox controllers, I hope those work with 14.4 when it gets released to the public, because currently in the beta, they still do not work. I also hope we see a fix for the green tent issue for iPhone 12s. And then of course, I hope that we see better HomePod mini handoff integration with 14.4, which I'm sure that will get better just because it was new here in 14.4 beta one. I would assume that's going to get better, but it's just really buggy. It's almost unbearable at this point when you hand off to your HomePod mini. Now, as far as when to expect iOS 14.4 beta two, I mentioned this in my follow-up video last week. And then the week before when 14.4 beta one released, I said all along that we would not see a new beta until January. And that's what it's looking like still. So I would expect beta two on either January 5th or January 12th. Now it could be any time within these first two weeks of January, but those are my two first guesses. So January 5th or January 12th. So I think that we're gonna see it on the week of the fourth right here. Of course it could be earlier, but my bet is on the fifth right there. Apple did wait until the second week of January last year to release anything, but I think this year is a little bit different and not everything is just exactly like what they did last year. So that's when we can expect to see 14.4 beta two. Now, as far as the final version of 14.4, you know, released to the public, released to everybody, I would not expect to see that until 
either the last week of January or early February. So if I had to guess, I would say early February is when we can expect to see the final release of iOS 14.4 to everybody. Now, as far as iOS 14.3 goes, I have iOS 14.3 here on my iPhone 12, which I have been using on and off. I've mostly been using iOS 14.3, or I should say iPad OS 14.3 on my 2020 iPad Pro. I use that every single day. I also use my iPhone 10R on 14.3 quite a bit as well still. And it's actually been running really good. It's kind of the opposite of 14.4 beta one, which is you know kind of a given since it's a final public release versus a first beta. But still 14.3 has been a delight to use. As far as the performance and the battery life, it's been excellent so far on 14.3, just like I mentioned in my previous follow-up video. So I'm not gonna waste your time and just tell you exactly what I told you in that last follow-up video because nothing has changed. Everything is still really good so far with 14.3 and I expect it to stay that way. And I hope that 14.4 doesn't ruin that, but we'll see when that gets closer to its final release. Now, as far as features that I never covered on the channel, there are actually a couple more that I just keep finding with 14.3. And the first one actually has to do with Siri. So you can now actually have Siri play animal sounds. So if I go ahead and ask Siri here, what does a lion sound like? Here's a lion. So you can hear that there, and there's actually a little play button right there. So you can kind of play it back and it shows audio sample. You can actually tap on this right here as well, and you can read more about that sound, which is pretty interesting. And that's new in 14.3. You can actually do that for multiple animals as well. So let me go ahead and say this. What does a dog bark sound like? Here's a golden retriever. And you can ask Siri to play multiple different breeds of dog as well. You can just have it play multiple different sounds as well. So that's pretty interesting and a pretty cool new feature there in 14.3. And then the next one has to do with translation inside of the Safari application. So once you go to a website that you want to translate and you tap on these A's up here, you can see what I believe to be a new option that shows report translation issue. And when you tap on that, you have the option to report it or learn more right there. And you can see that it says that it is currently in beta. And if you tap on report, it just simply reports it and that's it. You don't have to fill anything else out. I guess just a team at Apple will look it over and make sure that the translation is accurate. So those are just a couple of things I found new here in 14.3. It seems like I keep finding more and more new things on both 14.3 and 14.4. Now, as far as the text message notification bug, this has been fully fixed for me and it continues to be fully fixed for me on both 14.3 and 14.4. So of course I use 14.4 now as my main device and I have not missed a single notification since being on 14.3 or 14.4. So that is excellent news and I would say that it's fixed for 95% of people. Now there are still some people reporting that it's missing, but there are definitely more people that it's fixed for than people that it still persists for. So that is great news. Now, I also wanted to discuss the community poll. So if you guys go over to my channel and go over to the community tab, you guys know I do like to run polls in here and you know kind of include you guys in these videos as well. So you can see here just three hours ago, I posted what iOS version are you currently on? Also, how is your performance and battery life? Leave a comment below. So I gave three options, 14.3, 14.4 beta one, or iOS 14 through 14.2.1. And you can see, 80% of people are on 14.3, 9% on 14.4 beta one, and 11% on 14 through 14.2.1. So I'm glad to see that number is the lowest for 14.4 beta one, because I recommended you guys not to update for you know multiple videos, I said not to update. So that's good, I would wait for beta two to update to 14.4. So I'm glad to see a small amount there, but an overwhelming amount of you guys are on 14.3, and that of course is based on 10,000 votes. So thank you guys all for voting. And we have 370 comments as well. So I'm not gonna be able to read all of these. You guys can go in here and read them if you want to, but I am going to just discuss some of these here. So I did also ask if anybody else is having Bluetooth issues because I mentioned how I was having Bluetooth issues on 14.4. And you can see here, multiple people are agreeing with me and also having Bluetooth issues. Someone said they went back to 14.3. AirPods randomly disconnect and reconnect on the 10R. You know, some people are saying yes, some people are saying no. It just kind of depends on the person and of course how much you use your device as well will have an impact on that. So you can see here, Jamie says, I'm on 14.4 beta one. It's good, but a little glitching when swiping pages. So I assume that is the stuttering issue that I've also been having here. 
So Brandon, will they ever fix the text message bug? I still don't get texts from Android. So you can see there, John, still having issues. Again, I think that's probably like the five to 10%. Most people, this has been fixed for, but some people are still, for whatever reason, not getting their texts. I would also make sure you guys are not just getting those on your Apple Watch because that is easy to confuse with just not getting a notification at all. Some people just get it on their watch and it doesn't show up on their phone sometimes. So someone here is having connectivity issues where constant call failed and camera app issues on 14.4 beta one. So you can see somebody said they lost a bunch of calls. Of course, that may not just be 14.4. That could be a cell connectivity issue, you know, basically just like a, a dead zone, maybe not necessarily related to the software, but that is, you know, something that some people are having there. You can see here, fresh art. I like this layout, by the way, when you just do these bullet points, it's very easy to read. 14.3 iPhone 11. I just came from the iPhone 6. And to me, the battery life has never been better. So that's good news. A lot of people are saying the battery life and both the performance and battery life are great on 14.3. So that's always excellent news. Another person talking about the lag when they go from page to page on the home screen. So that is the stutter I was talking about. Someone has a jailbroken iPhone 7 on 14.1 and says the battery life is not good. I wonder why. You can see someone else here saying 14.4 is garbage. It's laggy and FPS drops and the battery heats up. Michael here is on a 10R on 14.3 and says the performance is 10 times better than 14.2 and the battery life is about the same. Seems like a lot of people agree there as well with the 22 thumbs up at the time of recording. So that is good news for 14.3 and especially on the 10R. I've had good results on the 10R with pretty much every version lately. So that's good to see there. And then the last one I'll read here comes from Pi Slice. They have an issue with Spotify closing and they say it's annoying, but so far so good. So for some reason, Spotify is closing on 14.3. So I'm not too sure what that's about. I don't have Spotify and I don't know what they mean by closing. But you can see here, some people are saying it doesn't close, but it freezes and the music stops playing. And someone else said, thank God I'm not the only one. So it seems like a lot of people are having this issue with Spotify closing or just simply not playing music. So that's pretty interesting there. So thank you again to everybody who commented and everybody who voted on this poll in the community tab. Of course, keep an eye on that community tab to be included in future videos. Now, before we go, I did also want to mention that we could possibly see an iOS 14.3.1 before we see an iOS 14.4. So if 14.4 gets released in early February, we could see a 14.3.1 in early to mid January. So there is a slight possibility. I wouldn't even call it slight. There's probably a 50 50 chance at this point of seeing a 14.3.1 in the first two weeks of January. And if we do see a 14.3.1, that pretty much confirms that we're not getting 14.4 until early February. So we'll have to wait and see, but I did just wanna mention that because I've not mentioned a 14.3.1 before, and I think there is a pretty good possibility of that happening sometime in early to mid January. But anyways, guys, there you have it. Those are my thoughts on iOS 14.4 beta one and iOS 14.3 after weeks of usage. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe for a lot more content and you know software follow-ups just like this one. And of course, let me know how these software versions are running for you down in those comments below. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Oh,